Our next panelist is uh, Cole Durham from BYU Law School. Constitutional analysis of religious liberty problems during the COVID-19 pandemic would be enhanced if we paid more attention to protecting religious autonomy. After all, the most urgent issues are collective religious autonomy problems. The basic problem with traditional constitutional analysis is that the admittedly compelling state interest in public health always blocks sensitive consideration of COVID-related religious liberty claims. This is true under the deferential review called for by Employment Division versus Smith, but also under strict scrutiny that demands that state actions be justified by compelling interests that can be furthered in a less restrictive way. To be sure, the concern for public health should often prevail, but after, not before, taking religious rights into account. Typical balancing tests are inadequate in the pandemic situation because as public health interests intensify, the significance of religion in people's lives also intensifies. It is no accident that in international law, religious freedom is non-derogable even in times of emergency. Indeed, it is often precisely in times of emergency that religion and religious freedom are most essential. Even arguably more sensitive equalitarian approaches that require comparison of religious practices with other social, business, social and business activities can fall short. The, these approaches deploy attractive equalitarian norms but can still be outweighed by public health concerns. They allow arbitrariness in selection of comparators and perhaps most problematic, the exclusive focus on equalitarian comparisons risks reducing religious liberty to a mere equality norm. In short, coronavirus po poses not only a first order crisis for public health, but also a second order challenge to the sensitivity of the analytic tools we use to address the religious freedom issues involved. Focusing on religious autonomy supplements other balancing and equalitarian concerns. It underscores the importance of deferring within broad limits to judgments made within religious communities. This includes, but is more than, recognizing reasonable alternatives proposed as less restrictive alternatives. It requires respecting, though not necessarily accepting, the rights of the community to have its own distinctive beliefs. It requires good faith dialogue and a genuine commitment to finding reasonable ways to optimize the right of the community to live out its beliefs. Deference is central to respecting religious processes that are at the core of religious autonomy doctrine. What is called for is not unlimited, but respectful deference. Deference that not only treats groups equally, but with respect for their autonomy, dignity, and freedom.